Hi friends, welcome to Plexus Ortho. My name is Dr. Kanan Kumar and today we are going to discuss uh, about casts in orthopedics. There are a few casts in orthopedics uh, that are named and which are important for your exam and so we are going to discuss those casts for you today. So what is the difference between a splint, cast and a slab? So let's start with what is called as a splint. Splint is made of plastic or some other material which is helped in supporting the uh, joint or bone for a period of time. What is a slab? Slab is only on one surface of the bone. It is not 360 degrees. So when you apply a plaster or a POP calcium sulphate half H2O on one surface of the bone or one surface of the part of the body it is called as a slab. When you apply that circumferentially C for circumferential C for circumferential it is called as a cast. So the three things that you have to know is a splint, a slab and a cast. Splint is a plastic material or some kind of aluminium or metal or some kind of material apart from a plaster of Paris which is applied to support a particular part of the hand or to perform a particular function. Slab is applied on one surface only or one side of the arm, bone or joint. Whereas cast is C for circumferential which is 360 degrees, it covers 360 degrees. So there are some named casts in the orthopedics which are frequently asked in your NEET PG, INICT and FMG exams which you must be thorough in because these are very factual memory based and you should not miss these questions. So let's straight away go to the first cast that we all know of. It's very commonly used, one of the most common casts used in orthopedics. It is called as a Coley's cast. What is a Coley's cast? It is used for a Coley's fracture. So distal radius fracture can be divided into extra articular fractures and intra-articular fractures. A dorsal displacement of the distal fragment is called as a Coley's fracture and a volar displacement of the distal fragment is called as a Smith's fracture. Right? And in intra-articular fracture, what is it called as? Barton's fracture. We have described this very in great detail in other videos. Please take a look at it. So Coley's cast is a cast uh, trying to immobilize these uh, uh, distal radius fractures. It's a cast in hand shaking position. If you can see, uh, your the uh, patient is trying to shake his hands. So it's in a hand shaking position. Very important uh, distinction between this cast and the scaphoid cast is that the thumb is not involved in the cast. So if the thumb is involved in the cast, it is called as a scaphoid cast. If the thumb is not involved in the cast, it is called as a Coley's cast. Remember that. Now this is another picture of the Coley's cast and the scaphoid cast. The scaphoid cast is for scaphoid fractures, which is the most common scaphoid fracture that we know of. It is the waist fracture. Scaphoid has a poor uh, bone healing potential, so there's a high chance of non-union and avascular necrosis. And uh, you, when you put a cast, you include the thumb in the cast and it is called a thumb holding or cut. It is called as a glass holding cast or a scaphoid cast. When the thumb is included, it is called a glass holding or scaphoid cast. When the thumb is not included, it is called as a Coley's or a hand shaking cast. Coley's cast or a hand shaking cast. So this, these two casts you must be very clear about. Maybe you must be able to differentiate it. That is a Coley's cast and a scaphoid cast. Coley's cast is for distal radius fractures. Scaphoid cast is for uh, uh, scaphoid fractures. And Coley's cast is uh, without the thumb and scaphoid cast involves the thumb. Remember that very well. Now come, let us come to a couple of these uh, spine casts. So when, when the cast is placed around uh, the uh, body in circumference to help in correction of some spinal problems, it is called as spine cast. And there are two spine casts that you must know of. Most of the things they ask about the spine is splints. We will discuss in another video. But the two casts that is using the POP or cal calcium sulphate half H2O, there are two casts that you must know of. One is called the Minerva cast or the Minerva jacket. It is very rarely used nowadays because very good splints are available which are made of plastic and aluminium material. The Minerva cast includes the head. Remember that. Any cast that involves and includes the neck and the head is called as the Minerva cast. Right? Then you have what is called as a risers cast. Risers cast does not extend up to the head. Which does not extend up to the head is called as a risers cast. As I've said, these casts are very rarely used nowadays because we have such great uh, splints 
uh, and which is a very good quality i hope they don't ask you this in your exams but it has been asked previously so you must be aware of it so minerva cast includes the head neck and head and uh, reserves cast does not include the head and neck so you can remember uh, the mnemonic mind so mind or brain is the minerva cast m i n minerva cast and the reserves cast does not include the uh, head region then you have one more uh, cast in the spine which is called as the turn buckle cast instead of the turn buckle cast nowadays we are using the turn buckle splint so when you are trying to correct scoliosis in this region when you slowly rotate a nut here this will keep correcting like this and the body becomes straighter or the spine becomes straighter so this is called as a turn buckle cast remember all turn buckle means there is a screw which is present you slowly turn the screw to correct deformities it is also used in the elbow knee etc but the turn buckle cast specifically in relation to the spine is for scoliosis correction then we have the spike cast remember what is a spike cast spike cast is a cast which goes around the trunk okay shoulder spike cast it covers uh, covers the shoulder whereas in the hip spike cast it covers the hips so the shoulder spike cast is used in various shoulder pathologies including tendon transfers transfers when you do an arthrodesis that is you fuse the shoulder joint when you have multiple injuries in the shoulder region so this is called called as a shoulder spike cast so it involves uh, includes the shoulder and the arm and the forearm in some cases and always includes the body so any spike it ro rolls around the body circumferentially and that is called as a spike remember the term spike so you have a shoulder spike and a hip spike shoulder spike involves uh um, putting the cast in the shoulder arm elbow and around the body for tendon transfers for multiple fractures in the shoulder region for um, you know post uh, any kind of reconstructive procedure in the shoulder brachial plexus injuries these are the conditions where the shoulder spike is used then you have the u cast or the hanging cast this is still used very frequently it is used for uh, humerus shaft fractures very important they are not used for any other fractures remember this has been asked frequently in your neat pg exam so they are basically most commonly used for humerus shaft fractures so because of the gravity and the weight it's called a hanging cast and it uh, aligns the humerus because of the gravity and the position of the cast and therefore it helps in the facilitation of healing of the humerus fracture in its anatomical position so this is called as a u cast or a hanging cast don't forget this this is the most frequently among all these splints this is the most one commonly asked question in your neat pg exams then comes the hip spike cast so hip spike as i have said any spike goes around the abdomen or goes around the body the main trunk of of the body so when it involves the shoulder it is called as shoulder spike when you put it along the hips it is called as hip spike this is also very frequently used cast it is used in uh, hip dislocations it is used in cdh that is congenital dislocation of hip which is also called as ddh remember that the second uh, condition which it is used is in femur fractures in children femur fractures in children don't forget this so hip spike is a very commonly used uh, cast uh, uh, in uh, general practice and this basically involves uh, stabilizing the hip joint in a particular position or abduction or adduction and flexion and this is done in congenital dislocations of the hip and it's also done in cases of femur fracture in children so if you use both if you involve both the knees then it is called as bilateral long leg hip spike cast if it involves only one knee then it is called one and a half hip spike cast and uh, you have this bar connecting these two otherwise it will break apart so these are the things that uh, you must remember in case of hip spike uh, application and most commonly used in children very rarely in adults and remember the indications for their use as well now coming to the tube cast this has also been frequently asked in your uh, neat pg exam a tube cast is a cast applied across the knee joint this is a knee joint it is applied applied across the knee joint uh, in the knee in almost full extension and this is called and this is called as tube cast and this is basically used most commonly for undisplaced undisplaced patella fractures undisplaced patella fractures however if the patella fracture is displaced what is the treatment of choice all of you know this very well it is tension band wiring the treatment of choice 
in a displaced patella fracture is tension band wiring this has been asked previously in a neat pg so this you must un know and understand then finally coming to another the last but not uh, least uh, named cast is the patella tendon bearing cast in cases of some tibia fractures when you have a tibia shaft fracture you can allow or undisplaced tibia shaft fracture you can allow the patient to bear bear on a cast and this is called as patella tendon bearing cast so the cast goes right up to this is a patella here and this is a patella tendon here and then the cast goes right up to the patella here and it allows the weight of the body to pass through the cast rather than through the um a tibia bone and uh, helps facilitates in immobilizing the tibia um substantially and therefore helps in the healing process so the advantage of this cast is patient can be mobile and at the same time the the fracture can heal so therefore a lot of the weight passes through the cast rather than through the bone and this is called as a patella tendon bearing cast and this is used in tibial shaft fractures so this is used in tibial shaft fractures so these are the named cast in orthopedics these are the few questions that you can get in your exams you should not make any errors in them i hope this helped you helped you to understand a little bit better uh, about these uh, cast so let's quickly recap uh, all the named cast that we just went through one is the colis cast which is used for distal radius fractures which does not involve the thumb scaphoid cast or glass holding cast which is used for scaphoid uh, fractures which does involve the thumb minerva cast where the cast uh, goes up to the level of the head reserves cast does not go up to the level of the head it only up to the level of the neck then you have the turnbuckle cast which is used for correcting deformities in the spine then you have the shoulder spica which is used for shoulder tendon transfers shoulder deformities shoulder pathologies and this is commonly used as well then you have the u cast or hanging cast which is used for humerus shaft fractures then you have the hip spica cast which is used for congenital dislocations of the hip and femur fracture in children then you have the tube cast which is used for undisplaced patella fracture this is the most common condition where it is used then you have the patella tendon bearing cast which is used for tibial shaft fractures where the patient can bear a little bit of weight that we come to an end of uh, named casts in orthopedics we hope it helped you uh, please do subscribe to our channel we will uh, get back with more videos uh, in the future thank you for hearing me out my name is dr kanan kumar and this is plexus ortho